Hi everybody, I'm Jared Pike. This is Shell Point Today for Monday, October 21st. On today's show, Adrian Kerr tells us about tomorrow's class, starring the seven wonders of the ancient world. We'll also hear advice from Jack Hubbard about getting around Shell Point while using oxygen. And we'll also learn how colored pencils might be the perfect artistic medium for you. But first, it's a very busy Monday, and we start off with some health news. The Medical Center held its second flu shot clinic on Friday, offering free flu shots to those who brought in their insurance cards. Now, it's important to get a flu shot every year because every year the strains are different, so you need to get the latest inoculation. And if you miss the clinics, don't worry. You can get your flu shot anytime just by visiting the J. Howard Wood Medical Center on the island. And it's best if you call for an appointment, so that way you don't have to wait. Call the medical center at 454-2146 to ask about your free flu shot. Now we also want to make sure you know about our assisted living breakfast tours, one of which is coming up tomorrow. Rita Southern and her staff are answering all your questions about assisted living allowing you to personally tour through all their facilities and throwing in a free breakfast to boot. The breakfast tour at King's Crown happens tomorrow at 10 a.m. And the Arbor at the Woodlands is also hosting a breakfast tour next Tuesday, October 29th at 9 a.m. Now to sign up for either event, call our assisted living hotline at 454-2077. Now our final bit of health news deals with oxygen tanks and concentrators. Now if you've ever seen Jack Hubbard of Lakewood around the community, you know that he carries an oxygen concentrator with him. And he's not alone. Many Shell Point residents need oxygen tanks or other accessories. So how do you manage it? Well coming up tomorrow, Jack is hosting a support group called Breathe Easy for all residents and their spouses who deal with oxygen machines on a daily basis. They meet tomorrow at 2 p.m. in the Woodlands Oak Room. Mary Franklin found out more about it. I'm here today with resident Jack Hubbard, and we are here to introduce to you a new support group that is getting ready to form. It will be the Breathe Easy Oxygen Support Group. Jack, thanks for being here today. Well, thank you for inviting me, Mary. Well. I remember one day we were out by the bus stop, you made a few phone calls to me and you said you had an idea for a future support group. Mm -hmm. And that is because you're dealing with having portable oxygen every day and you're managing really well. So far, so good. So far, so good. You're all, you're going to all of um, the programs and events that you want to and so forth. But people come up to you and ask you all sorts of questions. Is that correct? Correct. I've, I've been on oxygen 10 years, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, a lot of people ask me about my portable unit. Mm-hmm. Many have not seen it. Mm-hmm. And uh, others have other questions, and one thing leads to another, and I've talked to probably 10 or 12 people here on oxygen Mm -hmm. and to find out there's a need for them to and me too for that matter Mm -hmm. to have more information and so consequently here in the last few months I've been trying to get some more information Mm -hmm. and I've just found a wealth of information some of which I never heard of aware of and I'm amazed how much I was able to accumulate and you have some of that information here here. and that can be a good kickoff and support to this group on the progression and educational because this group really Mm -hmm. want to have an open conversation with each other on how to make things easier yes and you know one of the topics we talked about was how do you exercise right. when you have COPD because exactly. right. it's still very in, important it's very important yes mm-hmm. how do you eat you know there's yes, certain foods exactly. that can make it a little bit easier on you and what to talk to your physician about right. exactly. medications there is just a lot of topics to be covered and there are a series of them in this 
pamphlet that I received from mm -hmm. the COPD Foundation. Right. I never knew it existed. It's right. been in operation about two years, and they provide a wealth of information. Right, and you have CDs here and even a magazine. It yes. looks like almost a monthly magazine. This is a monthly magazine put out by the mm -hmm. COPD Foundation, and there's a wealth of information in all of this, and, and what we want to do is, is share with each other things that they have learned. Right. I, I'm not pretending to be a expert in this no. business. I'm like the rest of them, but by getting together as a group, we can share information and help each other Learn to better cope with their COPD. Right. And COPD, for those who are not aware, is actually includes emphysema and chronic yes, bronchitis. Right. Right. And COPD is just the the umbrella name, yes, it is. and we actually have had an informational discussion with Yao Adu Sarkodi, our pharmacist mm -hmm. here in the Health Connection. It was very well attended, and so I think that there's a lot of people out there wanting to gather information about COPD. Exactly. Um, the other so interesting statistic that I never knew, but preparing for this meeting, I heard that it's the third leading cause of death in the United States. It certainly is. Yes. So this is a serious topic. A lot mm -hmm. of people have it. But the good news is that COPD is often preventable and treatable. Right. Right. So those of you who maybe have had it in your family or worried you're going to get it, mm -hmm. come and you can learn prevention. And if you right. have it, let's learn from each other how to treat it. Right. Right? Yes. Okay. And I hope to have maybe some speakers out that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the pulmonologists, uh, I'm right. sure, would be happy to. I've already asked one. He was agreeable. Right. So It does take a community to make you feel good about yourself and even just to get in a room together and right. encourage each other. Absolutely. And to, to live life as the fullest of your capabilities. That's right. And you certainly do that. And you haven't let this get you down. No. So we all can learn from you. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Well, we invite everyone who is concerned about COPD, either of having COPD in the future or have it right now and would like to learn some more information. Have a wonderful and happy day. Now some updates from Resort Services. If you normally start your day off with tennis, well, you may need to take a break for the next few days as they are resurfacing the courts today and tomorrow. The tennis courts will be ready for normal play on Wednesday. We've got some great indoor alternatives for you. Today at 1 p.m., the Nifty Thrifty Fashion Show will showcase the best fashions from the community thrift store on both men and women. Now, you never know who may show up as a model at this fun and free event. The Nifty Thrifty Fashion Show starts today at 1 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. And then tomorrow, we're hosting the Fall Dance in the Grand Cypress Room with the theme, Wish Upon a Star. We'll provide the hors d'oeuvres, Billy Dean and Dawn will provide the tunes, and you provide the moves. The Wish Upon a Star Fall Dance starts tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. To sign up, call the Island Service Desk at 454-2282 or the Woodland Service Desk at 454-2054. Now there are also some academy classes this week that are worth mentioning. The first is from our friend and history professor, Adrian Kerr, who is covering the topic of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Now it's more than just a Jeopardy question. There is fascinating history behind each monument. Find out more tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. Here's a preview. Hello everyone, I'm here today with Professor Adrian Kerr and we're talking about a two-session program, The Seven Wonders of the Ancient World, that he'll be bringing to us on the next two Tuesdays. Thank you for joining me, Adrian. Thank you, Terry. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, The Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. The ancient world is a long, long time ago. Why are we still interested in these seven wonders? That's a good question, because six of them no longer exist. <laughs> one of my friends, who's a professor of underwater archaeology from New Zealand, um, caught me one day when I was giving a talk and came up to me and said, Adrian, do you know why they call um, the seven wonders of the world? And I said, um, go on, tell me. And she said, because when you go there, you wonder why you went. <laughs> because there's nothing to see, not apart from anymore. one. So it's all in your mind. Mm -hmm. But the concept of the seven wonders has lived with us um, for 2,000 years. It's sort of morphed in recent terms. Um, 
there are now seven wonders of the natural world, Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. Niagara Falls. There are seven wonders of the modern world, great buildings and structures. Um, there are seven wonders of the medieval world, and it goes on, it's proliferating. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to focus on in these two talks is the original seven wonders of the ancient world as seen by the ancient Greeks. So one day they went um, on tour, they were the first the world's first tourists had recorded what they saw, mm -hmm. and they looked at the world that they knew, which is the Mediterranean and a little bit into the Middle East, and they recorded the things that they had seen, most of them incorrectly, and as you go to any of the uh, foreign sites these days, you take a tour, half of what you're told is either fabricated or out of out of sync with the reality. And sure enough, the, um, the Greek travelers around 450 BC um, started to repeat some of the stories and legends that they'd heard. And so uh, the seven wonders of the world is a mixture of real uh, structures that we're going to talk about and why were they built and what happened to them, mm -hmm. but also some of the stories that developed um, from that. And today, for instance, um, you know, we still talk about a mausoleum. A, a tomb where people are buried. Where did that word come from? That came from one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh -huh. um, so we cover the Pharos Lighthouse, the world's largest lighthouse. The Colossus of Rhodes. Most of us have this picture of straddling the, the Rhodes Harbor, and we talk a lot about that. The mausoleum we talked about. Of course, the P Great Pyramid is the only surviving um, wonder of the world, um, which you can still go and see in its original state. Now. We're going back to the ancient world. Isn't it amazing that even then the Greeks were so amazed by what people had done? If you're a classically educated person, and there are less and less of us as time goes on, um, we tend to look back and say um, our education system, our philosophy, our art, our uh, poetry really grew out of ancient Greece and Rome. Um, and to some extent that's true. But the, the Greeks, of course, um, were great copiers. And they were the first people who toured to Egypt to um, today, Iraq, for instance, and Iran, and they brought back fanciful stories. The reason why we start, if you like, with classical education at that point is because they wrote this stuff down. They came home mm -hmm. and they wrote books. People had done this for thousands of years, mm -hmm. but there's no record of what they saw, what they were told. But you can go into any bookstore today and buy Herodotus, uh, um, who wrote this about 450 BC, his tour around the Greek world, or the Eastern Mediterranean, and the places he saw, the things he heard, and the description of the, some of the ancient wonders. And this book was written 450 BC, and you can still read it today. So it's the world's first uh, tourist guidebook. And that's why we look on the Greeks as being something special, because they recorded. They felt it was useful to record information for its own right. Whereas previous civilizations, the Egyptians, for instance, they never left us any record <coughs> of how they built the pyramids, uh -huh. who built the pyramids, <coughs> which king belonged to which pyramid, yeah. because it wasn't relevant. For the three million Egyptians who couldn't read or write, they, they were peasants, and the king, I, the king of Egypt, mm -hmm. couldn't be bothered to share <coughs> my knowledge with the, the population. So yeah. there is almost no current history of Egypt as, as it was in the ancient times. India is the same until around about five or 600 AD when the southern Indians, the Kola Empire, which expanded over to Indonesia, the Raja Raja the Great um, decided that he was going to write a history of his people. Mm -hmm. These are unusual events. So the Greeks were the first to do it 500 BC in the West, and other countries have followed on. But even China doesn't have a full history written contemporarily. Interesting. And because of that, it's valuable for us to know what the Greeks at that time thought of as a wonder yes. in the world. Good. Well, you have two opportunities to the next two Tuesdays to explore the seven wonders of the ancient world with Professor Adrian Kerr. Finally, on Wednesday, Karen Hubbard is teaching an academy class on colored pencil painting. Now, colored pencil is the perfect medium for some people because the pencils are portable, they're not messy, and even if you can't draw, you can do colored pencil painting. Her class starts Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. in the Sable Room. We visited Karen's last colored pencil class to learn why it's such a relaxing art form.
We started this colored pencil class primarily because some of the people in the art club wanted to have something to do on a Saturday, so we did four sessions, Saturday, Monday, Saturday, Monday. I think we've all enjoyed it very much, and in this session we've concentrated more on different techniques, uh, different ways to do things with color pencil, how to use them differently. We didn't come in and make a color wheel or draw an apple as we've done in previous classes, so it was a little different for everyone. Uh, and for some of them, this is the second or third time they've done it. Colored pencil is very, very relaxing. Uh, it gets very quiet in here. You can hear a pin drop. And it's also um, a medium that's kind of come into its own in the last 30 to 35 years. Um, they currently have a lot of different organizations that you can belong to or you can go online and check them out. It's become quite uh, popular. Um, I would say we probably have maybe four different organizations here in the state of Florida that are really devoting their time to it. It's quite reasonable as an art medium. It's very portable because you can just close up the box and go. You need a pad of paper and your pencils and that's it. It doesn't require any water, although you can use liquids with it. So all in all, it's been a little different for all of us to do that and I think we've all enjoyed it. This is a new medium for me and um, I, this is the way I started out and then I was talking to one of uh, my uh, friends here and I found out I was supposed to do it more gently. So this is what I've done. So it's a, this is intense and this is softer. But anyway, I love this new medium and, um, but it's different than everything I've ever done before. I love cats. I've always had cats since I was six years old. Uh, my last three cats have been Maine Coon cats. Uh, I miss having a cat here at Shell Point, and so I'm drawing uh, Maine Coon cats to uh, satisfy my longing for them. This one started out about this big, and I've scanned it, put it in Word 10, grabbed the corner and made it smaller, and then I went to the color correction and I got it very intense. It wasn't quite that intense as I drew it. And when I got it like I wanted it, I noticed that there was uh, another button that said effects. And I clicked that and it reversed the colors. And then I cut them out. This is on photo paper and I cut them out and put them on cardstock. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Well, I'm hooked. I mean, <laughs> I am doing this at home all the time when I have a few minutes. I'm in sitting down, putting on another layer, another layer, another layer. It's just really fascinating. Um, and Karen is teaching us so much about the color because you have to learn about layering color on, an on one another to get the color you want in the end. So that's what's really been good. We were just talking here in general about all the work, the wonderful work that everyone is doing. It is so different. It's such a wonderful way to relax. You know, you spend hours and you don't even realize how, how, you know, how much time you spent. And I think we need to say a, a little plug here for our wonderful teacher. I think she's just been very, very helpful to us in, in so many ways. And we've all had a great time during this class. If you're interested in trying colored pencils, then sign up for the Academy class, Colored Pencil Painting, starting on Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. in the Sable Room. Now, before we tackle all of Monday's happenings, let's preview our Channel 13 radio program, Listening to the Words. This week, you'll be listening to the words, Bathed in the Light of the Moon. The program begins with a cleric's nighttime appreciation of the beauty of God's nature. The story is accompanied by the flute playing of Lois Johansson of Shell Point. Also a story about scuba diving under moonlight off the Florida coast. Joy Ellen Ryan of Shell Point remembers one enchanted evening in a faraway land under a harvest moon. Amy Williams introduces a five-year-old who could remind you of Francis of Assisi. Jack Hubbard of Shell Point brings the ballet of the snowflakes, while Shell Pointer Sue Nelson introduces the goops.
one of the humorous offerings on this week's show. David Hauenstein inviting you to listen any day this week on Shell Point's Channel 13. Welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley and this is Leslie Brand and we're going to go over the activities that we offer for you Shell Point residents today. We're going to start out by reminding everybody that the tennis courts at the Woodlands will be closed today and tomorrow. At 9.15 this morning we have billiards at the Resident Activity Center. Also we have pottery with instruction available down in the tunnel at the pottery studio. Also at 9.15, there's virtual bowling going on at the Resident Activity Center. 10 o'clock, the Suzy Q takes off to Mantanzas Inn for lunch. Sign up is required at the Island Greeters Desk. Disciple Men's Bible Study Group will be in the game room of the Woodlands at 10.30. At 10.45, we have table tennis playing clinic in the tarpon room. At 11.30, we have a Health Connections class, Agility and Flexibility. That'll be in the Health Club, and that's currently full. Now, Leslie's here to tell you what's going on this afternoon. Thank you, Bev. At 12 o'clock, we have Mahjong in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. At 1 o'clock, we have a Health Connections class, the Balanced Basics at Assisted Living, in the Community Room at the King's Crown in the Island. Sign up is required. At 1 o'clock, we have the Nifty Thrifty Fashion Show in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. Sign up is required. At 1.15, we have Scrabble in the Library Lounge and the Island. At 1.15, we have Table Tennis in the Tarpon Room in the Islands. And also at 1.15, we have Tone Chimes in the Ospe Room in the Islands. At 1.30, we have the Model Train Room in the Train Room at one, from 1.30 to 3.30. At 145, we had the Health Connections, Balance and Mobility Training, Level 1, at the Health Club on the Islands, but it is closed. At 2 o'clock, we have the BDI Bead Club in the Oak Room at the Woodlands. At 3 o'clock, we have Health Connections, the Pilates Stretch in the Health Club. At 6.30, we have the Duplicate Bridge in the Game Room at the Woodlands. And also at 6.30, we have the Beginner Square Dancing in the Health Club on the Island. At 7 o'clock, we have square dancing in the health club in the islands. Thank you for tuning in with us today, and have a great rest of your day. Hi, I'm Terry Colath with your Academy information from Monday, October 21st. At 10.15, the Anatomy of Words will continue in the Buttonwood Room at the Woodlands, and you are all welcome to join them. At 10.15, we have HDTV possibilities with the iPad. This will take place in the Manatee Room on the island. Sign up is required. At 1.15, we have the third and final program, Arab Culture. This is taking place in the Village Church at the island. You are all welcome. I'd like to tell you what's coming up tomorrow. Advanced Memoirs on the Computer with two Lakewood residents, Marty Gibson and Lucille Peterson. We also have the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World with Professor Adrian Kerr. Sign up is required for both of those courses. The Apple iPad got one, now what? Will be presented by Bruce Findlay of Sundial and a how-to using a word processor presented by Russ Cray of Oakmont. Menus for Monday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is roast beef with baked potatoes and mixed vegetables. For dinner, the special is home cooking night for $9.95, and the soup of the day is Senate Bean. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Monday, enjoy fresh fruit with cottage cheese, sliced tomato, and a hamburger patty for $7.25. The dinner special is Island-style Italian beef panini with fruit for $8.25, and the Palm Grill is closed on Mondays. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Greetings and welcome today to Village Church Connections. Thank you for joining us. And I'm also being joined today by David Pavey. David has worked at the Village Church in a number of capacities over the last few years. Mm -hmm. But you are here today because you are representing our missions committee. That's right. And we are excited about a weekend that's coming up the end of this month, our Fall Focus Weekend. We have a very special guest coming. His name is Tom Albinson. Tom happens to be a personal friend of yours. Yes, he is. We worked together in Europe for a number of years in different parts of Europe. He was based in the Vienna, Austria area. We were in France, but he was constantly preaching 
ministry to refugees and he fired up a lot of people to take a special interest in these groups of people who were in special need. His concentration for the past more than 30 years has been ministry to refugees and he has done that around the world, um, whether it's Africa or Australia or Syria, as we're hearing right now, he's he's been involved in ministry to refugees. He's made a made a big difference in a lot of places. Vienna was one of the points at which some of these people who were on what he calls the refugee highway would come together, and they were placed in camps there. Other countries handled these people differently. And it was personally inspiring to me. I didn't realize what was going to happen, but a certain point in my life I found myself back in England when refugees were pouring in off the continent. And um, I immersed myself in that ministry for a whole decade, inspired partly by what I'd seen Tom doing in Vienna. Yeah. This will be uh, a unique opportunity for us at the Village Church. We haven't had guests come and talk about this kind of ministry in recent time. Um, but it is so pertinent to what's going on in our world today. We mm -hmm. hear this in the news all the time. Mm -hmm. And we don't always know how to interpret it. We don't know always how to view it or what our perspective should be. And I think Tom um, is a great gift to us mm -hmm. because he will be able to walk us through uh, what this means in our world today and how to minister to, to displaced people. And he'll be speaking both morning and evening. On Sunday, uh, both morning and evening, morning at 10.15 at our regular service, 6.15 in the evening. Yeah. And then I'm very excited because our academy class on Monday, October the 28th, will be in the Grand Cypress Room at 10 o'clock that morning, and he will be talking just a little bit more about the Refugee Highway mm. and what that means, yeah. uh, helping us gain an understanding about what's going on. Fantastic. So thank you for joining me, David. We are looking forward to having Tom here. I know you are, yeah. and the rest of us are as well. And we invite you to make it a priority to join us for this weekend, Sunday, October the 27th, and Monday, October the 28th, for our regular Sunday services and then our Monday morning academy class. And thank you for joining us today for Village Church Connections. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as Dr. John Pfeiffer fills us in on the latest advances in orthopedics. And it's Christmas time. Well, it will be soon. Find out why these residents are in the holiday spirit right now. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Monday, October 21st. I'm Jared Pike, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.